Aya. So today I'm going to be doing my reading wrap up for July. Yeah, July. Sorry for the very kind of awkward scene. I'm currently moving, so I actually don't have a lot of books with me. And um, <laughs> I like don't have a better filming spot. I also do think it's hilarious that every video I've posted is going to be filmed in a different location. Like, <laughs> no consistency whatsoever. Um, I'm trying to like, pull out, I have a whole system for marking down how I, like what I've read, and I kind of want to show that at some point, but today is not the day. Um, I have to figure out how to film something like that. <laughs> But yes, yeah, so starting with uh, the books, right? Um, the first book I read was The Employees by Olga Raven, I believe is how you pronounce her name. It was nominated for the like Booker International, International Booker list um, in 2021. And I bought it when I was in Copenhagen. The book itself is structured as a series of statements that kind of an HR team is giving employees on the ship 6000, which is a spaceship that has visited a planet and found these objects, as they are called in the book. The objects um, are being observed. It's hard to tell what they are. They're each quite different. And if I, I watched a, another review and I think someone was saying that Olga was commissioned to do this after going to an art exhibit and like seeing these objects and she's supposed to create something and this is what she came up with so in my head like I could probably look it up and these objects would be like the art pieces another thing about the ship is that there are two groups of employees one of them one group is humans and one group is humanoid so it's like android or whatever um and the statements are just we don't know what the questions are being asked. We're just hearing the responses and the responses are sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. Sometimes they're like really succinct, like this is what I do, this is my job. Sometimes it's reminiscing about a life on earth. Sometimes you can tell if someone is a human, sometimes you, can, you can't. you um, can And I think a lot of the book is questioning, like what does it mean to be alive? What does it mean to be a person? Um, a different review that I watched for this book, I feel like it said it really well, like this book is kind of a good foray into those themes, but if you're really into sci-fi, you've probably read this in a much more interesting and entertaining way. I feel like this is the sci-fi book, this is a book that explores sci-fi themes, but it's written for people who like poetry, which she's a poet, um, or it's written for someone who is really into like literary fiction. This is a easy way to explore those themes. In that way I feel like it was kind of cool. I I did like some of the statements. I did like thinking about my life. If I had to kind of make a statement, what would mine be like? What would my role be on this ship? And I feel like in a way the story sparked my own creativity. Like I completely imagined my own world with my own characters on a spaceship and what they would do if they were on, you know, a, 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 an alien planet. Um, but yeah, I think the book's like, it's pretty easy to get through, but I didn't, I didn't think it was like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> this is the best book I've ever read. Like, I would, um, yeah, but I really liked the ending though. I thought the ending was like super, like the best part of the book completely. The next book I read was Hall by Ye Chun and this, I loved this short story collection. It's a short story collection specifically about Chinese women and it details kind of a variety of experiences um, that Chinese women might might you know go through. Uh, some of these women were in China, some of these women were in the US, um, and it focused a lot too on like language and I feel like language as like, communication um, and kind of it at times detailed like the etymology of certain words. I thought it was like really, they, they were really like simple stories, I guess, like nothing that would feel unheard of. Like, I don't wanna say unremarkable, but like 
a woman who experiences a stroke and is um, disabled by that stroke. That's not necessarily a story that we've all experienced, but it's not so out of the realm of all of our lives. And so how that woman has to use language. And a lot of these women feel particularly silenced. So I feel like the focus on characters um, is really beautiful in that it is this form of communication. It is, it is this form of like language and I don't know, I thought that it was really well done and the first story made me tear up um, and I'm not like someone who cries when I read, so I thought it was really beautiful. I feel like if someone was to ask me a story that I could like recommend regarding Chinese experiences, obviously as like not a Chinese person, um, <laughs> like, hey, what books have you read about like Chinese experience? Um, I would recommend this over like Interior Chinatown like, I liked what Interior Chinatown was trying to do, but I kind of feel like this story to me was maybe like a little bit more interesting, or these stories were a little bit more interesting. Um, which, side note, Interior Chinatown, I was with you, but the ending? Mm, did not like the ending. That was weird to me, personally. After that, I read another book um, that like sets place and talks about a Chinese woman and that is Falling Leaves by Adeline, Adeline Yen Ma and it's a memoir for a Chinese author slash anesthesiologist um, and it talks about like the really horrible emotional uh, abuse that she faces uh, from her French Chinese stepmother. Um, it was it was a very difficult read in my opinion because I just would, like got so angry at how this young girl and like how her siblings are treated and I it made me heated it made me mad I just wanted to like punch this woman and I don't know it, it felt like I kept reading like the parts on the back where people are saying like oh the triumph of the human spirit and I was like yeah it's amazing that uh Adeline is the main character never like the, my main character is like the, the focus of the book never lost her ability to love people and never became jaded but at the same time I was like Adeline be jaded these people are horrible do not associate do not help them and maybe you know I'm not as good of a person and but wow it was it was a really hard read um and you'd ever get like anything kind of akin to justice I guess the justice is that, you know, hey, Adeline wrote the book, she's the one who gets to tell the story, so there's justice there, I suppose. After that, I read Confessions of a Mask by Yukio Mishima. Um, this is the first uh, Mishima book that I've read, and <laughs> now that I've read it, I keep seeing him pop up everywhere, uh, which is kind of crazy, and now I really want to read a lot more by him because the book itself was super good. It tells the story of a young gay Japanese boy to teen to young man um, and what it's like growing up gay in the like era of like early 20th century Japan um, not even like early going into World War II so that period right Imperial Japan um, the the title obviously right confessions of a mask he's wearing a mask throughout his life he's not revealing who he is what his true desires are um so well written like wow i was in love with mishima's writing style i was in love with the personality he gave his narrator and you really like you felt like you were there with him you felt like you were truly watching someone go through something i also loved how for me it felt like because um, the main character wasn't able to express his desires they became increasingly dark and i don't want to say perverted but like violent so it's like he was twisted because he didn't have this escape and i loved how art and sex and violence just kind of melded in this like beautiful and unique way in this way of having an outlet um for the main character I feel like too, if I compare this to, for example, um, uh, No Longer Human, 
I feel like those two characters some somewhat have kind of a similar struggle where there's something in turn like they're worried people are going to see their mask slip. Um, I really liked Confessions of a Mask more because it kind of in a way felt that the stakes were slightly higher. Like if the character in um, becoming no longer human, if his mask falls, it's like, oh, you just kind of like fake your life. Like there's something deep about that. A lot of people feel like they're not ever being their authentic selves, but the stakes felt a lot less than in Confessions of a Mask where like if his mask falls, if he reveals his true identity, there could be like truly negative, negative consequences to that. Um, and like social consequences, like that could be a lot worse. So yeah, I, chef's kiss, loved the book. Don't love the guy though, Yukio Mishima, not great views, but I do want to read more by him. I am not going to mention the next book because that is a gift for someone, so I'm gonna skip over that one. But yeah, there's another book that I read. <laughs> um, after that, I read Bloodlands by Timothy Snyder as part of like a little book club that I'm, that I'm a part of. This book was very difficult to read uh, because it talks about the area between Nazi Germany and like Russia during um, like leading up to during World War II and after. And I say Russia, not the Soviet Union, because it talks a lot about what happened in Ukraine, for example, which was part of the Soviet Union, but like a lot of like violence and murder and genocidal action happened there. Um, I think this is a really good book for someone who wants like a flat, like this is what happened. Here's background on the Eastern Front. This is what you need to know. This is the kind of pretext to what happened. Um, this is the during, and here is some of the consequences of those actions. I also think it's a great read to understand a little bit about how um, like Moscow power has affected Ukraine. Yeah. So what I was saying, <laughs> um, The Bloodlands is, I think, a good book to read if you like want to know more, yeah, about how like the Moscow regimes treat, um, treat the kind like other Eastern European countries, um, really horrific. I mean, it also really annoys me too when you get like people who romanticize Stalin in a weird way, like no, horrible guy, bad guy, just because he is associated with a political belief system that you value mm. does not mean you have to like that guy. <laughs> I <laughs>4.5 star book like I appreciated the storyline which is um, a family is like joined together at four funerals and you're exploring the relationship between these people and also the relationship like between the people of South Africa like South Africa kind of coming to a reckoning with itself um, and it, it kind of reminded me of um, Dairy Girls, how you have the like political backdrop happening and then sort of the like adventures of this young girls and their friend. Um, and in this you have this family undergoing their own personal tragedies while also the backdrop of the like, you know, political events in South Africa occurring. Yeah, the book takes place over several decades. It's in these four chapters or sections um and I really love Galgut's I think that's his name Damon Galgut um I love his writing style his ability to create these realistic internal monologues he never uses um like scare quotes quotation whatever these are called right he never uses that so it's um 
conversation bleeds into like internal thoughts, bleeds into other people's thoughts. Uh, so it's sometimes you realize that a character has said something out loud after they've said it. Um, sometimes you think something's being said out loud, but like it's you, you later learn it's not been said out loud. Um, I love that. I love how it's like you're traveling like between people's minds and, and that was really cool like the whenever um dreams are brought up it's beautiful how you kind of just slip in and out um yeah and and that's what i really liked about this book like the writing is so amazing that it's just it's hard not to enjoy it um a couple things i didn't like about this book first of all there's very clearly like a main good character in the book but after the first chapter, she's like the least explored. And that kind of annoyed me because it's like, well, yeah, it's easy to have a great character when that character doesn't have to do a lot of growing or developing. Like we don't see what's going on in their head versus all these other characters. We get to hear their like dirty little secrets, their, their nasty internal thoughts. But what about her? Like if we're supposed to love her, I feel like hearing those thoughts are part of loving her. Um, so she felt the most distant, but then also we were supposed to like her the most and I was like, well, of course, you know, if I don't hear, if no one knows what I'm thinking in, inside my head, it's a lot easier to like me. Um, so that was one thing where I was like, okay, yeah, but like, <laughs> felt, felt, felt a little cheated. Um, I also thought that there's kind of like an, a conversation that happens at the end where, where it like kind of wraps everything up neatly in a bow and I'm like, okay like okay sure like i don't know and so i was like i felt, felt a little too easy for such a complicated book to have such like an easy bow on the end felt a little weird um the other thing that i kind of didn't like as much in the book the first two chapters the death like the death has happened kind of off screen and the last two um it doesn't have like like stuff happens before the character dies um and it's not even like a spoiler as to who it is like the chapters are named after the people it's really easy to figure out um but i didn't like that as much i felt like in the first two chapters we were sort of joining these characters in their passing the characters have sort of said their final thoughts we don't get to sit with them as much and i thought that was put you more in the space of the remaining characters in a way that in the end like it's almost like you felt their they felt still alive to you because they were alive four seconds ago which i guess is how it's supposed to feel like when someone passes that that's an experience people have but at the same time the ending that you got in those pages felt in the previous chapters felt more real than that so I don't know, I understand why. I think it gave maybe more context, more complication, um, which, you know, these things are always quite complicated, but at the same time, I, I appreciated the other chapters a little bit more in that respect because it felt too like we were being drawn in to a funeral and not drawn in to a death, if that, if that kind of distinction holds any weight. But yeah, those were the six plus one seven books I read in July. Um, it was great. Currently, I am reading two books. One is It Ends With Us by, I think it's somewhere over there. It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. Gotta say, gotta say, the beginning is not great, but I know that it becomes more complicated. Um, but so far, I don't love it. Um, the other book I'm reading is The Beekeeper of Aleppo, which I definitely like a lot more uh, so far. And I think that the descriptions are like really beautiful. Some of the writing in there is just, wow, that, that, that description is blowing me away. Uh, so yeah, hopefully I will see you soon for another reading wrap-up, book review, whatever. Uh, okay, thank you so much!